Hi class, uh, we continue our study in chapter three by moving into section 3.4. And in this section, we're gonna be talking a lot about um, word problems. And they're gonna be word problems of the form value, interest, and mixture problems. And I'm gonna show you a process to solving them and I will do an example or two of each of these types of problems. Okay, so here's a five-step problem solving method that we're always gonna use when we do these uh, word problems. So to solve some problems in which we want to find out two quantities, okay, so that's going to how you're going to know it's going to be a system of an equation. It's going to be two things we're going to be solving for. It's useful to perform the following five steps. So step one, first thing we want to do is we want to define each variable. So for each quantity that we are trying to find, we usually define a variable to be that unknown quantity. And a lot of times in these sections, we'll be doing the variables X and Y. The next thing we're going to do in step two as we're gonna write a system of two equations. So we find the systems of two equations by using the variables that we find in step one. We can usually write both equations either by translating the information stated in the problem into mathematics or by making a substitution into a formula. So I'll give you the formula for a lot of these problems here. Um, but again, you're just gonna be looking like for the keywords to translate the, the problem that's given to you into two different mathematical equations. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to solve the system. So we're going to have these two equations that we found in step two. So we just solve the systems of the equations that we found. After that, we're going to describe the results. So we want to use a complete sentence here to describe the quantities we found in step three. And then step five, we're going to check. So we reread the problem and check that the quantities we found in step three agree with the given information. Okay. All right, so let's talk about uh, an example of something called the total value form. So if n objects each have value v, okay, so I'm selling n objects, like I'm selling 10 things, and they each have a value of like $5, so that's v. Then their total value, which is capital T, is given by T is just v times n. So in other words, the total value is equal to the value of one of these objects, obviously, times the number of the objects. All right, let's work an example. So a music store charges $5 for a six string pack of electric guitar strings and $20 for a four, um, four string pack of electric bass strings. So notice here you have two things. You have a six string pack for electric guitar and a four string pack for an electric bass, okay? Two things. So if the store sells 35 packs of strings, so we know that, we don't know how many they sold of each, but they sold a total of 35. All right, for a total revenue of $295, how many packs of each type of strings were sold? Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. For step one, we're gonna define the variable. So remember, there were two things. We're gonna let X be the number of packs of guitar strings sold, and we're gonna let Y be the number of packs of bass strings. Okay, so we're selling guitar X and bass Y strings. Okay, the next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna write two equations. So the revenue from the guitar strings is equal to the price per pack times the number of packs sold. So the guitar strings are $5 times the number of packs. And the revenue from the bass strings is equal to the price per pack times the number of packs sold. So they cost $20 and we're selling Y packs. So we're going to add the revenue from the guitar strings plus the bass strings to find a formula for total revenue. But remember, we know what total revenue is, right? We, they're telling us that they sold $295. So I'm going to replace that in for T. So one equation is the $295 we're making is equal to 5 times the guitar number of guitar strings plus 20 times the number of um, bass strings. So since we know that they, the store sells a total of 35 packs, well, it's just the number of guitar strings plus the number of bass strings sold has to equal 35. So this is our system. So we have 5X plus 20Y is equal to 295. That's equation 1 and x plus y is equal to 35, that's equation two. So the next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna solve this system. So you can do substitution or elimination, it doesn't matter. Uh, I'm gonna do elimination here. So basically I'm just gonna get rid of the x and I'm gonna multiply this equation by negative five. So use elimination to solve the system, eliminate the x terms by multiplying both sides of the second equation by negative five, then we're just gonna add the left side and right sides to get y. So here, notice, I'm just gonna take this equation, I'm gonna multiply everything by minus five. This is what I get. I add down the five X minus five X goes away. So I'm left with 15 Y is equal to 120. 
So when I divide both sides by 15, I get y is equal to 8. So next thing, once I know what y, I'm just going to solve for x. So I'm going to substitute 8 for y into the second equation and solve for x. So it was x plus y is equal to 35. Well, in this case, we know y is 8, so x plus 8 is equal to 35. So when you subtract it over, you know, 8 minus 35 gets you 27. So the x here, all right, the number, so we, knew, we solved for the number of bass strings. X is solving for the number of guitar strings. So let's describe the result. So what we're seeing is the store sold 27 packs of guitar strings and eight packs of bass strings. That's it. Check, you can check. First, the sum is equal to 35, which is equal to the total number of packs sold. That's great. Next, the total revenue. Obviously, if you take five times, uh, $5 times the 27 uh, guitar strings they sold plus $20 times the eight bass strings they sold, that does equal 295. So that checks out as well. So boom, we got it. All right, uh, let's do another one here. So a 10,000 seat amphitheater will sell general seat tickets for $85 and reserve seat tickets for $65 for a Foo Fighters concert. Who doesn't like the Foo Fighters? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna let X and Y be the number of tickets that will sell for $45 and $65 respectively. So let's assume a show will sell out. So our first thing I wanna do is I wanna find an equ equation for total revenue. So let total revenue be a function of just f of x, be the total revenue in dollars from selling $45 and $65 tickets. All right, let's find an equation for f. <clears throat> All right, so the next thing I want to do after that, after I find the equation of f, I want to use a graphing calculator to sketch the graph of f for um, between 0 and 10,000. Okay, what x is going to be is x is going to be the number of seats, okay, sold. All right, because going to let x and y be the tickets for um, 45 and 65 respectively but um, you're going to see we're going to put this in terms of one variable let's find f of 8500 what does it mean in this situation let's find f of 11,000 what does it mean in this situation and then finally the total cost of production is 350,000 how many of each type of tickets must be sold to make a profit of 150,000 interesting all right, so first thing, we're going to add the revenues generated by ticket sales and the re revised tickets, reserve tickets to find an equation like this. Total revenue is equal to 45 times X plus 65 times Y. All right, so far we've described T in terms of X and Y, but now we just want to describe T in terms of just X. How would we do that? Well, we know the total number of tickets sold for a sellout performance is 10,000, so X plus Y must be 10,000. So to get y alone, we're just going to move the x to the other side. So y here is equal to 10,000 minus x. So I can replace or substitute my y in for 10,000 minus x. All right, so when we do that, we substitute 10,000 minus x for y into our equation. This is what we get. We get total revenue is equal to 45x plus 65 now times this. So when I distribute the 65, it's equal to 45x plus 650,000 minus 65 is equal to minus 20x plus 650,000. So an equation of, of f here is just f of x is equal to minus 20x plus 650,000, just like that. All right, so when we draw a sketch of this, you can see the graph of f is decreasing line with slope negative 20. This means that if more uh, if one more ticket is sold for $45 and one less ticket is sold for $65, okay, the revenue will decrease by $20, which, which makes total sense, total sense, right? Like the difference between this and this is 20. So for example, if they just sold $10,065 tickets, they would make this, but every non-reserved seat they sell loses $20. All right, so f of 8,500, well, what does this mean? So if you take 8,500 and plug it in for x, you get minus 20 times 8,500 plus 650,000, you get 480,000. This means that if 85 tickets sell for $4,500 and then obviously 1,500 tickets sell for $65, the total revenue would be $480,000 to this show. f of 1,100, well, if you take 1100 and plug it in, you get minus 20 times, excuse me, 11,000 plus 650,000, you get 430,000. This means that if 11,000 tickets sell for 
dollars. The total revenue will be 430. But since there is only 10,000 seats, obviously this is model breakdown because you can't sell more tickets than there are seats. All right, to make a profit of $1,500, the revenue would need to be take 350 plus um, $1,500, you need to make $500,000 here. Because if you go back here, the question was um, the total cost of production is 350000 and you add the profit you want to make. So to get that 500000 so you're going to take that 500000 and substitute it in for T for the total revenue, and you're going to solve this equation. You're going to subtract the 650000 over to get minus fifteen. Um, 150,000 is equal to minus 20x, divide by minus 20. And to make a profit of $150,000, you would need to sell 7,500 um, seats for $45, but then you would also need to sell 2,500 seats for $65, right? And when you do that, then the profit would be $150,000 for this single show. Okay, let's move on and talk about interest profits. So money deposited into account is called the principal. So like, for example, if I put $1,000 and um, put it into a bank account, that's the principal. I have, I have a $1,000 deposit. So the annual simple interest rate is the percentage of the principal that equals the interest earned per year. So a person planning to invest twice as much in a, in a Calamus Growth A Fund at 11.7 annual interest rate, as in uh, this other one, I'll just call it the PE Fund, at 19.1% annual interest. Both interest rates are five-year averages. So how much will the person have to invest in each fund to earn a total of $850 in one year? Okay, a little weird here. All right, so let's define each variable. So I have this money. So I'm gonna put X money into this fund that gets 11.7 annual interest rate. And I'm gonna put Y money or in dollars here invested at 19.1 annual interest rate. Okay, now the trick here is to remember that um, you're putting twice as much in for Y as you did for X. So let's write a system of two equations. So the person invests in twice as much in the 11.7 account as in the 19.1 account. So the first equation is X is equal to 2Y. All right, so because the total interest is 850, I'm changing the percentages to decimal. You get 0 0.117 times X plus 0.191y is equal to 850. All right, because that 850 is how much money I want to make. So our system is the first equation and the second equation. You can see you're just going to directly solve with substitution here. So you're going to solve the system. We can subst use substitution to solve the system. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this 2y and plug it in for x over here and then solve the system. So when I do that, multiply here. Now you have a single term. You can combine that. This plus this gives you the following. Now you're going to divide both sides by 0 0.425 and you get y is equal to $2,000. So once you know y, all right, now you're going to solve it and find x. So x is equal to 2y. So 2 times 2,000 is $4,000. So the person should invest $4,000 in the 11.7 annual interest fund and $2,000 in the 19.1 annual interest fund. And obviously, you'll, the, you'll see that both of these things, when you plug them in and check, it works out. In general, if uh, for an X percent solution of two substances that are mixed, we're doing mixture problem, X percentage of the solution is one substance and 100 minus X percent is the other substance. Meaning, if you have two solutions and you're mixing them, and one, 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 one substance counts for 25%, well then obviously the other substance is gonna be 100 minus 25 or 75%. That's what this is saying with mixture problems. So a chemist needs five quarts of a 17% acid solution, but he only has 15% acid solution and a 25% acid solution, okay? So he wants to mix these two percent solutions to somehow get a 17% solution. So how many quarts of 15% acid solution should you mix with 25% acid solution mix to make five quarts of a 17% acid solution? 
All right, so go through the process. Let's let X be the number of quarts at the 15% acid solution, and let Y be the number of quarts at the 25% acid solution, because I've got to mix those two quarts, those two solutions, acid solutions, to get the 25%. So write a system of the two equations. All right, since we want five quarts of the total mixture, I'm going to add X plus Y is going to be five, because I want the number of quarts for this solution plus the number of quarts for this solution to be five. So the total amount of pure acid doesn't change regardless of how it is distributed in the two solutions. So we find our second equation from the fact that the sum of the amounts of the pure acid in both the 15% acid solution and the 25% acid solution is equal to the amount of pure acid in the desired mixture. So it's going to be 0.15x, how much of the 15% solution, plus 0.25y, how much in the y solution, is equal to I want 17% acid five quarts, so times five. So five times uh, 0.17 is 0 0.85. So this is our system right here. So you can solve this multiple ways. Um, I'm going to solve um, with substitution. So I'm going to take the first equation and solve it for y. I'm just going to move the x over. Then I'm going to substitute this five minus x in for y in the second equation right here. And I'm going to solve it. So distribute as such. Combine this 0.15x minus 0 0.25, you get minus 0 0.10. All right, you have this 0 0.25 times 5 is 1.25, so I'm going to subtract this over, and then I'm going to divide, so you're going to get four quarts of this solution right here. So you can see that substituting uh, the four that you got for x into y is equal to 5 minus x gets you, you need one quart of the other solution. So you need four quarts of the 15% acid solution and one quart of the 25% acid solution are required to produce a five quarts of 17% solution. So I won't go through this too in much detail here, but obviously if you check the numbers we just found, um, they will check out. So it works out perfectly. Let's do one other quick one. So a chemist needs eight cups of a 15% alcohol solution. All right, but only has a 20% alcohol solution. Right, so how much 20% solution in water should she mix to form the desired eight cups of the 15% solution? Well, the trick here is, is that water has uh, no alcohol percentage. Okay, so let X be the number of cups of the 20% solution and Y be the number of cups of water. Okay, so since she wants eight cups of the total mixture, it's going to be the number of cups of the alcohol plus the number of cups of water, it's got to be eight cups. Finally, then, there is no alcohol in pure water, so we find our second equation from the fact that the amount of pure alcohol in the 20% alcohol solution is equal to the pure alcohol in the desired mixture, or 0 0.2 times the number of alcohol has to be equal to the total 0.15% solution times eight. All right, so the system is x plus y is equal to eight, Obviously, 0.20x is equal to 1.2. So first off, um, begin by solving the second equation for x. Just divide. You get x is equal to 6. Okay, so I need 6 cups of the 0 0.2 solution. Solving for the other equation here, you see you need 2 cups of water to do this. So the chemist needs to mix 6 cups of the 20% alcohol solution with 2 cups of water. And again, this will check out when you check it out.